This video is intended to explain what suction, airflow, and airwatts are, how they relate together, and why far more needs to be considered to make judgments about the carpet cleaning performance of any vacuum cleaner. There's a lot of confusion shown in many YouTube videos over the meaning and relevance of these terms in various situations, which leads to a lot of misleading content and myths about which are the best cleaners. Specifically, very little understanding is shown between measurements at the hose relative to at the floor. The presence of a carpet complicates things enormously, and carpet cleaning performance requires consideration of many more factors beyond just suction and airflow. The actual cleaning performance can be measured formally, as is done by professional labs, and the procedure is described in international industry test standards. Performing such tests, Dyson cleaners of a given form factor, whether it be cylinder, upright or cordless, are independently shown to perform and deep clean to the highest standards across all floor types, as highlighted famously in the first link in the description. However, if measurements were taken at the hose of such high performing cleaners, the numbers for suction and airflow would not be the largest relative to other machines. So how is it possible that a cleaner with relatively lower numbers for airflow and air watts can achieve the best average cleaning performance across all floor types? Surely bigger numbers are all that's important. Or are there other things? The secret is in the art of efficiency in designing to maximise the utility of those minimum resources used. This is often missed by those who solely quote numbers because it's not something you can simply write down as a number. While it's easy to brute force acceptable performance with bigger numbers, at great expense to the environment, achieving superior performance using much less is far more difficult, particularly for battery powered devices, and only the very best manufacturers achieve it. This video will expose the level of confusion and misunderstanding in many YouTube videos and provide a more scientific and detailed explanation of the relationship between suction and airflow in the presence of a carpet. The intention is that whenever you come across anyone making judgments or drawing conclusions about cleaning performance by relying solely on regurgitating numbers for airflow and suction, you can point them to this video in the hope they learn how to avoid misleading others. So what are suction, airflow and airwatts? Airflow is a measure of how much, i.e. the volume, of air expelled by the motor of a vacuum cleaner in a given time. It has dimensions of litres per second, or metres cubed per second. Sometimes old-fashioned imperial units are used of cubic feet per minute, or CFM for short. Suction is a measure of the pressure difference produced by a motor running at a given input power. Higher suction can help maintain airflow when it's reduced by a carpet relative to at the open hose. As a pressure, it has dimensions of pascals. Air power, often referred to as air watts, is a measure of the power of the moving air. Dimensionally, air watts are the product of airflow and suction. Air watts are a measure of the above floor cleaning potential and have no direct bearing on cleaning performance in the presence of a carpet. A carpet is the equivalent of a blocking filter and causes a huge resistance to airflow. As such, airflow measured at the open hose is completely different to the flow through the carpet, which will be much lower. Different carpets will allow a different airflow for a given cleaner. Good suction can help compensate for carpet air resistance to improve flow, but there will never be as much airflow through a carpet as at the unblocked open hose for a given suction level. Technically, you need to understand complex fluid dynamics for compressible gases to fully appreciate the air system of a household vacuum cleaner, but that's well beyond the scope of this video. Nevertheless, the relative impact of the presence of a carpet and the subsequent relationship between airflow and suction can be well described by analogy with Ohm's law used in electrical circuits. This has been known about since 1827 and is taught to everyone at high school, so none of this should be new to anyone. In electromagnetism, Ohm's law provides the relationship between voltage, current and resistance. In fluid dynamics, by analogy, 
airflow is the current, suction or difference in pressure is the voltage, and the carpet is the resistance. Also, airwatts are analogous to the electrical power. Ohm's law shows that once you put a carpet in the way of the flow, thereby increasing resistance relative to an open hose, the flow rate will drop. However, if suction is strong to compensate for that large increase in resistance, then more airflow can be maintained through the pile. In other words, strong suction overcomes carpet air resistance and maintains more of the original open hose airflow at the cleaner head after it's sealed to the carpet. Suction is thus important for good airflow through a carpet. Vacuums with poor suction will have much larger overall reduction in the original hose airflow when on carpet. This means even if airflow at the open hose is very high, the resultant flow through a carpet could be less than other machines with higher suction that can maintain carpet airflow. This is a very important point to understand. In many videos on YouTube, there are examples of people wrongly assuming the relative difference in airflows measured at the hoses of different machines translates directly to the airflows through the carpet pile. This is completely false and misunderstands basic science. Both suction and the particular carpet resistance play a critical role in the resultant airflow through the carpet pile. You don't get good airflow specifically through the carpet without good suction. You can get good airflow with low suction at the open hose where there's little air resistance, but not when the cleaner head is fully sealed to carpet where there is high air resistance. Measurements of airflow at the hose are thus completely unrepresentative, totally irrelevant, and wholly unrelated to carpet cleaning performance, and so there's literally no point in measuring them for that purpose. The resultant airflow through carpet pile is very difficult to accurately directly measure. However, the resulting cleaning performance is easy to measure, and more important anyway. Incidentally, as with the presence of a carpet, an increasing air resistance also happens when filters clog quickly on machines using poor dust filtration technology, and also on old-fashioned bag machines as the bags gradually clog. While bag technology has improved to minimise this resistance value, it still occurs and they still lose airflow at the carpet relative to a pristine bag or Dyson bagless cleaner. The overall resistance is the sum of the individual resistances, and the flow through the pile and resulting cleaning performance correspondingly decreases. Some manufacturers have been caught effectively cheating power consumption labelling by increasing suction via a huge increase in the motor power to brute force continued airflow at large cost to the environment. This is discussed more in the second link in the description. Now that we understand the difference a carpet makes relative to an open hose, there are some important points to make about suction. The best vacuums achieve good airflow through carpet by efficiently tuning motor suction to compensate for carpet blocking the airflow relative to an open hose. If suction is too low, then there's low airflow through the pile and relatively poor cleaning performance. Conversely, if suction is too great, the larger pressure difference causes the cleaner head to clamp excessively on the surface, making it difficult to push around, and vacuuming becomes a tiresome chore. Suction is often optimised to provide maximum flow through the pile, whilst avoiding excessive clamping. The level of suction, and thus the airflow you can get through the pile before excessive clamping starts, depends on the type of carpet pile and its level of resistance. More air resistant carpets cause excessive clamping at lower suction levels, which thus limits the maximum airflow possible through the pile whilst avoiding clamping. Increasing airflow by increasing suction after excessive clamping starts only makes clamping worse and is the reason why there's no point in vacuums having suction that's too high. You can't move the vacuum easily and is a problem the old Dyson DC41 and other cleaners suffer from on some floor types. In other words, you can't brute force more airflow through the pile by overly increasing suction because it introduces other problems.
If a cleaner head doesn't have a good seal to the carpet and has gaps or is over the edge of a surface, then this causes a reduction in cleaning performance. This is because there's both a loss of suction pressure and lower air resistance given the carpet is effectively bypassed, and so there's much less airflow through the pile removing dust. This is illustrated in this circuit diagram representing the situation. The easier path for airflow is through the open gap rather than through a resistive carpet, so most of the flow is through the gap leak with little through the carpet. The loss in suction pressure and the reduction in airflow through the carpet means cleaning performance drops. Ironically, the total airflow into the cleaner head will increase because bypassing the carpet means the system resistance is lower, thereby increasing total airflow. But most of what is being drawn in isn't travelling through the carpet or doing any cleaning. This situation is essentially back to an open hose and the motor power is being ineffectively utilised and mostly wasted. Along with any other unintentional leaks, this represents a very inefficient cleaning situation. With well-designed cleaners that have good carpet seals, you can tell when such leaks or gaps happen because the head becomes easier to push. When vacuuming, it's always important to not have the head hanging off the edge of a carpet or stairs and always with a good seal to the surface. Otherwise you waste cleaning power and get poor cleaning results. Some badly designed cleaners compensate for sloppy design and leaks by brute forcing adequate performance using more power. These machines could be using many kilowatts of power which is mostly wasted in the manner just discussed with only a fractional portion directly involved in any cleaning. This is overpowering and is an environmentally harmful cop-out that achieves acceptable cleaning results only with simultaneous large wastage. Worse, when bigger numbers are measured at the open hose, people that don't understand how airflow works through a carpet will wrongly assume that more powerful machines are better cleaners. In reality, they're no better and simply waste much of that extra power they consume. Based on what I've covered so far, it's obvious all that power isn't being utilised. Remember, there's a limit to how much air can flow through a given carpet before excessive clamping becomes a problem. If all that power was used to maximise suction, the vacuum would be glued to the floor and unusable, so there have to be leaks in those machines. This is why the EU recently banned wasteful, high-powered vacuum cleaners to force better design, and this is covered more in the third link in the description. There was a lot of scaremongering leading up to the ban, and many of the myths are still circulating in YouTube videos today. We know optimal utilisation of resources to maximise suction, airflow through a carpet, and resultant cleaning performance can be achieved from good design using very little input power and having much smaller numbers measured at the open hose, as I'll come on to later. Another important takeaway message from this video is that vacuums using very large powers to achieve extremely large suction levels at the hose are almost certainly rife with inefficiency and hugely wasteful of their power at the cleaner head on carpet. The very advanced digital motors in mains equivalent Dyson cordless cleaners can produce relatively high suction pressures for their size and weight. As discussed earlier, the purpose of a strong suction pressure is to counter the resistance of the carpet to maintain good airflow through the pile. Whilst Dyson's digital motors might not provide high airflow at the open hose relative to heavier motors, their ability to produce high suction pressures means that on carpet the highest level of airflow is maintained through the pile where it actually counts and is at least comparable to the net airflow through carpets produced by mains cleaners. Again, the airflow through an open hose is not representative of the net airflow through a carpet. Many people are caught out by this misunderstanding as shown in many videos on YouTube. The high level of airflow through the carpet pile from mains equivalent Dyson cordless 
is also illustrated by the fact that excessive clamping occurs not just in the highest suction mode, but even in normal mode on some higher resistance carpets. As discussed earlier, the onset of clamping is an indicator that there is a large pressure difference at the head and there is optimum flow through the given carpet. Excessive clamping in normal mode is the reason why a lower suction mode is also provided to reduce the suction pressure and associated clamping levels when it occurs for some carpet types. This allows easier use yet still provides as high an airflow through that particular carpet pile as possible to help achieve the best cleaning results. Low power mode, when used in such situations, does not mean significantly reduced cleaning performance or an inability to deep clean. This is a common myth, as I'll discuss more in a moment. The carpet's air resistance is the limiting factor to the airflow and carpet cleaning potential when you're at the onset of clamping. Excessive clamping is also why max mode is not recommended for typical cleaning and only intended to clean small, heavy spot messes more quickly, such as a knocked over plant pot. If air watts are above floor cleaning potential, then air flow is the on floor cleaning potential. Given that there's a maximum air flow achievable through a given carpet pile before excessive clamping occurs, maximizing the utility of that airflow is therefore important for getting the best cleaning results. There are other factors that must be considered for best results and is the reason why airflow alone through a pile doesn't determine the final cleaning performance. Pile separation is possibly the single most important factor to achieve good deep cleaning, particularly on deeper pile carpets. A separated pile ensures air can flow freely deeper down. It's a complete myth that deep cleaning is only achieved by brute forcing dirt up from the base of a carpet with extreme airflows. As just discussed, airflow through a pile is in fact limited by the carpet resistance for a given suction, i.e. when suction is at clamping onset, as described by Ohm's law. Furthermore, deeper dirt will likely get retrapped by other fibers on the way up if they are not separated to leave a free gap space for removal. With suction sufficient to achieve maximum airflow at the onset of clamping, and with pile separated, a maximum volume of air the pile allows will flow near the carpet base, removing deeper dirt without any obstruction. This is why deep cleaning is achieved even in low suction mode using mains equivalent Dyson cordless cleaners. This is another really important takeaway message from this video. The new wider diameter brush bar on Dyson cleaners since around 2017 helped improve pile separation and achieved even greater cleaning performance than older designs. Many of these other factors all play a role too, and many have been covered in detail in other videos on my channel worth checking out. Careful optimization of all these factors and more are why Dyson cleaners achieve the highest average cleaning performance across all floor types despite using very little power and having very low numbers at the open hose. Engineering for efficiency allows for best utilization of maximum airflow through the pile. This is why the Dyson name and brand are synonymous with quality, efficiency and performance. Dyson cleaners are independently measured in laboratories using professional international industry standard tests to have the highest average cleaning performance across all floor types. Putting what's been covered in this video into practice, it's worth looking at some of the worst examples of where YouTube videos have got it wrong and are misleading viewers. Kirby vacuums are often cited by a niche few as being the ultimate vacuum cleaners. The vacuums have relatively low suction levels, but their high airflow at the hose is often cited as the main reason why. Their cleaning ability is very likely an overrated myth and no evidence has ever been provided of cleaning results professionally measured to the international test standards that other leading vacuums are tested to. The closest I've seen is this EU label. In fairness, these labels are highly misleading 
as discussed in the third link in the description. To try and visually demonstrate the alleged performance of Kirby vacuums, two common mistakes are frequently seen in YouTube videos which cast serious doubt on the claims. Firstly, high airflows are cited based on measurements from the hose alone, and this is then assumed to be identical in carpet. As discussed throughout this video, this contradicts basic science and is completely wrong. Motor suction is important to retain good airflow through the carpet, and these vacuums have relatively little. Hose measurements of airflow are irrelevant and don't translate at all to carpet cleaning. It's very likely airflow through the carpet is much lower than claimed and not significantly beyond competitor machines, despite the popularity of the myths. Secondly, some videos try to show high airflow at the head, but fail to accurately replicate a good seal to the carpet. Instead, the head is often hanging over the edge of a rug, which as discussed earlier, in fact represents the open hose situation and is unrepresentative of airflow through a carpet. The gap allows suction leakage and reduced air resistance, and airflow reduces through the pile as a result. Total airflow increases into the machine, now mostly from the gap, bypassing the carpet completely and doing no cleaning. It's highly misleading to then relate such demonstrations to actual carpet cleaning potential. There are other factors also cited, such as demonstrating very aggressive vibration levels. This myth is covered in its own dedicated video with the fourth link in the description, and discussed further in the fifth link. Many of the other optimizations to best utilize available airflow through a pile, present in the genuinely best cleaners, aren't present in Kirby cleaner heads. Many of the misleading tests are often performed to try and inflate the abilities of a Kirby and trick people into thinking it's better than it likely really is. These are easily debunked. One such test is the Kirby Dirt Meter test, which essentially exchanges the bag for a fibre pad to help visually show what was sucked up and often left behind by a previous cleaner. This test misleads by failing to understand the statistical nature of particle removal as discussed in the sixth link in the description, and that all vacuums always leave some dirt behind. No one ever repeats their tests several times in a row to show each time what the same Kirby itself leaves behind and that concentration exponentiates lower. It's all very misleading. Another classic chestnut is the sucking a toilet tube test. This tries to visually show the Kirby has more airflow by wrestling a toilet tube from another rival cleaner. And no, I'm not making this up. The Kirby always seems to win, and Dyson cleaners in particular always seem to lose, supposedly verifying Kirby's superiority. However, in reality, the test actually shows the exact opposite of what's intended, and reveals which cleaner head leaks suction the worst. This leaked airflow bypasses the carpet, as discussed earlier, and is a measure of which is the more wasteful vacuum. There are plenty of other tricks out there following the same lines for Kirby vacuums, not just on YouTube, but the web in general, so watch out for them. Genuinely good vacuums don't need to rely on tricks and deception. Professional evidence for the performance of a Kirby is non-existent, and bedroom supporter tests are full of flaws and misleading tricks, which suggest the claims of high performance are likely just long-running myths. Hopefully this video shed some light on terms like suction, airflow and airwatts that are commonly used but little understood, particularly in the context of carpet or resistive flow. There are some really key points and takeaway messages from this video I just wanted to end with. From Ohm's law, airflow is lower through carpet compared with at the open hose, and more so for low suction cleaners. The best cordless cleaners currently on the market achieve mains equivalent deep cleaning performance because their high suction pressure motors maintain good airflow through the pile. Low airflow numbers at the open hose are thus a complete red herring and don't necessarily impinge on a cleaner's ability to deep clean carpet. The onset of clamping means the optimal practical airflow limit through a carpet has been reached, and thus adding more suction only produces excessive clamping. 
If the cleaner head isn't fully sealed to the floor, you get suction leaks, and this represents an open hose situation that isn't representative of carpet cleaning performance. You can't illustrate carpet cleaning performance by showing the equivalent to an open hose situation. Very high powered machines must mean they're wasteful and have cleaner head suction leaks, otherwise clamping would be so high that it couldn't be moved around easily. Airflow represents on-floor cleaning potential, and many other factors are relevant to best utilise that flow to get best cleaning results. Good pile separation is critical for deep cleaning. A separated pile means the air flowing can remove deeper down particles directly into the airflow without obstruction from other fibres. Best results are achieved with airflow maximised for a given pile when the suction level is enough to be just prior to clamping onset. Deep cleaning is thus achieved even in low suction modes on appropriate carpets using mains equivalent Dyson cordless cleaners. Using a maximum suction mode unnecessarily doesn't deep clean better. It just enhances clamping, making vacuuming more difficult. Max mode is only intended for spot messes. The best deep cleaning results can be achieved with minimal resources in the best designs, and it's incorrect to think that brute force machines perform better. Independent testing to industry standards shows the highest levels of cleaning performance is achieved by cleaners utilising very little power. While this video has explained the relationship between suction, airflow and airwatts, specifically between an open hose and through a carpet, the only metric that's actually important to measuring cleaning performance is the average cleaning achieved across all floor types. This is easy to measure by professional independent test houses and is conducted formally to scientific accuracy following industry standard test methodologies. This is thus the best thing to look for in a vacuum and you can ignore indirect metrics such as airwatts, CFM and inches of water which are red herrings used to mislead people. Dyson are keen to advertise that they score the best in professional independent testing. Shark are also keen to claim the same, but as the video in the first link in the description shows, they deliberately lied and were sued for millions in June 2018 for deceiving customers.